everyone, welcome back. Um, my name is Elizabeth. Uh, this is Fizzy Lizzie Stitches. Today is September the 12th, 2021, and today is floss tube number nine. Um, welcome back if you are a returning viewer, and welcome if you are new. I think I've been here uh, long enough where I can start saying that now. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, um, today I'm rocking glasses and overalls and my Ratatouille shirt, which is being covered up by the overalls, but there's Remy in there. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very random. I'm going to Disney for Christmas and the new Ratatouille ride, I think, opens like in October or something. So I'm very excited to get to ride that later this year. Hopefully COVID won't. Be, get worse and prevent me from being, being able to go um, but yeah so today I only have one whip to show you <laughs> I was very monogamous the past two weeks so there's gonna be a lot of chattiness going on today since I just have the one thing to show you so um, today's gonna be kind of random but that's okay cuz I kind of like that there's only one whip today because I don't know if it first of all it's gonna be easier for me to edit because I won't have to include as many pictures and then secondly I can just take my time and draw things out and not feel like I'm rushing so yeah pretty much um so what have I done in the past two weeks um I went to visit my family for Labor Day um, which kind of made these past two weeks go by really fast because I left on, it's like a five hour drive from where I live. So I left on Thursday and then I took Friday off and then I came back home on Monday, Labor Day. So then, so both work weeks, like before Labor Day and after, day, after Labor Day, were both four day work weeks for me. So they both kind of went fast. And I also had a lot of stuff going on that, I don't know, I guess it was good that I only had one stitching project that I was working on because there were some days where I just didn't stitch, so, which is no big deal. But, um, yeah, so, did that. That was fun. I hadn't seen my family in probably since, like, Mother's Day, I think. So, um, and then... So right bef this is totally random also. Right before Labor Day, I had an orthodontist appointment, which is very random because I haven't had braces in like 13 years. But I had gone to the dentist a month prior and they noticed, I, have, I had like a permanent retainer glued to the bottom of my teeth and they had noticed that my, te my center two teeth on the bottom had like curved where they weren't touching the retainer anymore basically making the retainer useless. So they recommended that I go see the orthodontist and I care a lot about my teeth, so I was all down for that. Anyway, went to my orthodontist appointment before I went home and he basically told me I could do nothing, take the retainer out and get a new retainer for the top and the bottom. Or take the bottom retainer out and get aligners, which would then turn into retainers. So I kind of thought, thought about it the whole weekend and I decided to go with the aligner option and mostly because my insurance was gonna pay for some of it. Um, otherwise I probably would have just done the regular retainer replacement. But yeah, so anyway, I went to the orthodontist again last week, this past Wednesday, and they took the bottom retainer off my teeth on the bottom row. And I was kind of like mind blown because it basically felt like getting braces off all over again. I had had that permanent retainer since I got my braces off, so 13 years. And yeah, I was so now like I'm always rubbing my tongue on the bottom part of my teeth because <laughs> it's it just it's weird. I haven't had that retainer. I've had that retainer for so long that it feels kind of naked back there now. <laughs> so I'm supposed to go back this Wednesday to actually get my uh, trays or a liner, whatever they call them. So yeah, 
But anyway, I'm kind of excited. It's a totally random thing that I wasn't expecting to have to deal with or take care of, but I'm kind of excited about it because I'm not going to lie, I kind of enjoyed having braces the first time. <laughs> not that these are braces because they're just aligner trays, but still. Anyway, I was a nerd. I had braces in sixth grade and seventh grade, but most of my friends were, were getting them as I was getting them off. So, yeah. Anyway. Moving on from that, um, I also have more adulting things to do because I've had a cracked windshield for like two years now. So next week, I'm going to call the dealership because I also have to get my 30,000 mile oil change service thing done. So I'm just going to pay the pretty penny and have the dealership do everything for me because I don't mind knowing that I'm gonna have to pay more than if I were to find somebody else, but it's a more of a peace of mind thing. So judge me all you want, <laughs> um, but anyway. Yeah, so that's kind of it with like life stuff, I guess. And it sounds kind of boring if, I don't know. I don't usually talk about life stuff on here because I don't know if people are gonna be like, I don't care about that. I just wanna see stitching, but I don't know. <laughs> It's not that bad. Okay, so I, this is green tea, and I put honey in it. I've never drinking hot green tea or cold green tea. <laughs> anyway, this is my mug. It says, I am a unicorn, and it's a hippo with a unicorn horn. But um, I, I found myself, like, making beverages in place of snacking. So tea is kind of the new frontier for me but um I'm not usually a hot drink kind of person but I kind of like it I had some sleepy time tea last night and I don't know I enjoyed the process of making it and then drinking it was fine too but I'm excited to like try other stuff see what I really like also totally random and not stitchy related <laughs> um but yeah so I guess I'll just show you my project now. Um, we're almost like 10 minutes into this video. Um, so I bet you can't guess which project it is that I worked on. Um, I'll tell you, it's Cozy Cafe. <laughs> um, so this is what it looked, this is what it's going to look like. And this is what it looked like last time. And this is what it looks like now. So I am fully caught up. I even ironed it for you guys with my little baby iron. <laughs> um, but yeah, so really the only thing that is out that I haven't stitched is there's some scallop pieces right here that I just skipped because I didn't actually go off from here to stitch the fruity, the sparkling water. I went from the top here to find where I was supposed to stitch, so. But yeah, so this is, these are all the parts that are out so far. Um, the next part should come out on September the 25th, I believe, which should be like a day before my next floss tube. So um, probably won't see this next time because there, I won't have had time to stitch anything on it. But yeah, so I, like I said, this was the only thing I worked on for the past two weeks. This thing is so cute. Um, I, it was funny. I posted about this on my Instagram story that I um, finally caught up and Evelyn from Evelyn Across the Pond <laughs> messaged me and she was like, I kitted this up. I'm going to start it. <laughs> um, so anyway, I just thought that was funny because she had, she had commented on the last video where I showed this and she was like, you're really making me want to stitch this. So <laughs> good job, Evelyn. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so I worked on this for, oh, this is also interesting. So I use the toggle app to track how long I stitch on things. And before I was just like writing it down every day, like how many hours I stitched. And then I was like kind of rounding up and adding them together for a rough estimate. Well, I found out there's actually a statistics tab that lets you customize the date. So I customized it to the date 
I worked on it between last video and this video. And I worked on this for 17 hours, 46 minutes, and 31 seconds. So in that time, I stitched um, like the bottom part of this, oop, the bottom part of, I guess where the label starts, down. And then I stitched all of this over here. So, and I think I probably added all the flourishes around the sparkling water bit. But yeah, um, I'm really excited about this. It's really cute. I don't know how much longer we can look at this and not be bored. I need to get a good picture. I keep I keep forgetting to do um, I keep forgetting to do thumbnail images. So, but it's also kind of hard because I'm like ah. <laughs> That's actually not that bad. <laughs> but like, what do I do with this arm? <laughs> and like go under here and hold it out? <laughs> or am I supposed to, I don't know. I can do whatever I want, but it just cracks me up. So anyway, but I, while I was stitching, um, while I was stitching this, I watched a new show to me on Disney Plus called Behind the Attraction. Highly recommend um, if you're a huge Disney nerd and you have Disney Plus. Um, but they talk about like how they finish different rides and stuff or how they like all the behind the scenes on like how that ride came to be So I think I have like a couple more episodes left, but it's really good. That's what I watched while I was stitching this But here's the coffee um, This was funny too. I so obviously I knew that S and J stood for the little characters from Frosted Pumpkin but I could not for the life of me remember what the S stood for because I knew J was Jack and I was like what is it I really haven't I didn't even have a guess I had to go to their website and dig and try to find what his name was his name is Sugarloaf now that I know that I'm never going to forget it but it, yeah it's S and J for Sugarloaf and Jack so there's the coffee and then the other one that I finished since last time was the water. So, and there's going to be, I don't know what my neighbor's doing. I live in an apartment and there's always random noises happening. So now it sounds like they're hammering something. There's no telling what it is. But anyway, I'm going to try my best to ignore it. Hopefully it's not too annoying. <laughs> but... Yeah, there's supposed to be black beads on this can um, because there's kiwi and dragon fruit on here. And then I think this one, the beads are supposed to be on the donut as like sprinkles. So, but yeah, that's my one and only whip. So get a good look at it if you haven't already. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, I'm caught up. I'm, but not gonna be able to stitch that until later this month. So, but yeah. Um, but that was the only whip I had, but I did do a sewing project yesterday. I made myself a project bag and I used um, Liz's, Elizabeth Ann can stitch her project bag tutorial, which I'm sure you've heard of. Um, <laughs> but it was funny, in her one of her other videos, she was talking about how that was one, I think it was her 50th, um, floss tube. She was given some statistics and apparently that was one of her most watched videos. Well, Liz, it's because I had to watch it like 10 times while I was actually making my project. <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> but anyway, here's my project bag. I have my Caterpillar cross stitch needle minder chilling on the outside. But yeah, I got this fabric. All the stuff that I used to make this, I got it all from Joann's. Um, I actually was struggling because I knew that I wanted to make like a Christmas bag. I, I was going to buy lots of fabric. I was going to do a Christmas bag, a Halloween bag, an all year round type bag. But the thing is, Joann's doesn't really have, it's very hit or miss with their fabrics. And I was, it was kind of a miss for me. So this was the only one that I was like super in love with were these little Christmas cats. So it's just the same Christmas cat pattern on the back. And then... It was also very hard for me to find coordinating fabrics, but I managed to get this red textured looking one. And then I just used a white zipper and on the inside, it's also the red, but then up here is the cats again. So but yeah, and I already have my uh, Lucky Nutcracker project in here. 
I want to find something to put on the zipper for fun. But yeah. Um, so, funny things while I was making this. Um, <laughs> I have a basic singer, like beginner sewing machine. And I, I've sewn zippers before, okay? But they were on a book sleeve where I did not sew this close to the zipper. Okay, so I just used the regular foot that is on my sewing machine. Well, then Liz kept, you know, talking about how she was sewing with a zipper foot. And I was like, I don't even know if I have a zipper foot. I don't know what a zipper foot looks like. I don't know, like, what I should do instead. Well, then I, like, Googled, <laughs> you know, zipper foot images. And I was like, oh, hey, I do have one of those. So, which makes sense, because I feel like every sewing machine probably comes with one, because it seems like just as basic as the normal foot that you would use. So, anyway, I discovered that I did have a zipper foot, and then I had to learn how to put it on my machine, which I figured out on my own without having to Google that. Um, but it did take me a second because it basically, like, you can, I, I don't know if all zipper feet are like this, but um, you basically have to choose which side you want to stick it like attach it on and I was trying to like put it in the center but it wasn't clicking because that's not how it works so anyway I learned about the zipper foot yesterday <laughs> um, which I really liked it because it, it'll it's very easy to hug right up next to the zipper which is the whole point obviously but and then another thing that I learned was fusible fleece. So I do not have a real iron. I just have like one of those mini irons that you can use for like um, pressing small quilt pieces and things. Um, the reason that I don't have a big iron is because my boyfriend has a big iron with like a real ironing board. And I know that one day our stuff will come together and I really just don't want to have two irons. So, because he has a really nice iron and a really nice ironing board. So I just bought this tiny little craft iron to get me by over here because he lives on the other side of town. Anyway, I'm sure that the baby iron does not get as hot as a real iron. So some of my fusible fleece came like unstuck while I was turning this thing right side out and I actually had to like flip it back and then like try to un unfold the fusible fleece and reattach it, re-iron it back on so that I could get it all smooth because there was like a huge lump in the corner where the fusible fleece had like peeled up. So yeah, highly recommend this. It's very, it's not very hard. Um, the most challenging parts about this were really knowing where to put your fabric, where, how, like how to set it up to sew it and then sewing the zipper on. So, and then, yeah, everything else is pretty easy because you're just sewing straight lines, but I think I'm going to probably, I definitely want to make more. I'm definitely going to go to Fat Quarter Shop next time to pick out fabric because they have a much larger selection and nicer stuff than Joann's, obviously. Um, and then once I get comfortable with this, I think I might try the vinyl front, but I'm kind of scared to do that, so I'm just going to stick with this pattern for now. <laughs> but I definitely want more because they're really cute. They're a lot bigger than the Amazon bags that I've used because this one would be tall enough to actually fit my Q-snap in. So, yeah, I think that's all about I can say on this project bag. I, oh, I did write down that it took me about three to four hours to stitch this or sew this. So, yep, I love this gray cat because she reminds me of Piper. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Um, let's see. My plans don't have very big stitching plans. Um, I'm obviously going to start the Lucky Nutcracker style from Caterpillar Cross Stitch when that comes out on September the 17th. Um, but that's my only hardcore plan. The rest of it I'll probably just leave up to fate with the whip wheel, um, which I think a lot of you may be familiar with. There's several apps out there. I think I use one called Tiny Decisions, and you can just type in all your projects and then spin the wheel and it'll select one for you. So I might do that, um, but there are some projects that I definitely don't wanna work on. So like if it does pick that, then I'll just roll it again or just not include it on the wheel. So <laughs> yeah, anyway, because I have, I have quite a few 
I just don't know which ones I really want to work on. So I have Sweetheart Campfire, um, Alice in Wonderland, which I'm probably not going to work on. Garden Party, totally up for grabs. I could, I'd, I'd be fine with that. Wizard of Oz, I don't plan on it picking up this month. Cozy Cafe is on hold until the next part comes out. Little Women is on hold until I feel like doing it. And then Possum Song is relatively new. I started that one last month. So I'll probably, it'll probably be a battle between Possum Song, Garden Party, and Sweetheart Campfire. Um, but yeah. I don't know, I may do the possum because it's the newest and I kind of want to see that one done because it's just so cute. <laughs> so that was all I think I had written down. Oh, yeah, so I did want to share this yarn that I got in the mail. I think I mentioned it in a couple of videos ago where I was talking about this whole build a blanket yarn and the girl makes like these cute tiny little hand dyed skeins of yarn to do this random blanket. I'll put a picture up so jog your memory or learn about it for the first time, either one. <laughs> but anyway, my stuff came in the mail and it came in this adorable little like popcorn candy bag thing and I did not know what kind of yarn was gonna show up. It's a random skein like blanket of the month thing. Oh, oh please. Oh, okay. So these are the skeins that I got in my little blanket, um, what does she call it? She calls it Build a Blanket Lucky Dip. And these are 20 gram skeins of DK, which is like the weight of yarn that it is. So yeah, anyway, there's this like brown with like flecks of um, like purple and there's even like a little bit of blue and yellow in there. And then this one is mainly white with flecks of like pink and red and like a teal so I'm very excited I don't plan on starting this blanket anytime soon I'm honestly like I'll probably just stock up some more little skeins from her um, I do not have a ball winder so it definitely won't get started until I get a ball winder but yeah and then she also added this random little poof of yarn <laughs> some scrap from some of the dyeing and then she even sent along a little piece of candy, which I'm excited. I haven't eaten yet. Um, it's called Mayo, Mayo, Mayo Om. I think it's cherry flavored. It's very soft, like taffy. But I have not eaten it yet, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, and then she just includes instructions on like how to start your blanket or like, I mean, you can do whatever pattern you want, but it, it's just very loose guidance on you know what you could do so yeah that's kind of my very short tiny haul i did place a very large order with mad for minders because i'm crazy i literally bought enough needle minders to double my collection so which is like 10 needle minders or so so i'm very excited for those to come in maybe they'll be here before my next video so but yeah that's yeah, pretty much it I did bring this because I just wanted to show you because I didn't know like if I was going to have a lot of stuff to talk about in this video. But this is an old candle jar that looks like a milk jug. And this is where I keep all of my um, orts. Um, so, yeah, anyway. This really is just so cute. I leave this on the counter and I'll just, as I'm stitching, I'll have like a huge pile of thread like on a pillow or something. And then when I'm done, I'll just kind of like gather it all up and shove it in here. <laughs> so... But, and there's a random fortune down there, but I like seeing all the random colors um, because like down here is like a bunch of gray and black because that's when I was stitching my moon. Um, and then there's really no telling what some of, the, some of this I think is from the Wizard of Oz when I was stitching all those rainbows and yeah, anyway, it's just really cool to see all the different like color because like all this was like the trim around the coffee on my uh, cozy cafe. But yeah, I like, I just like this. It's very random. <laughs> and um, another thing I wanted to show is I got this basket to hold all my project bags because I was putting them on this um, cart that I also keep my books on. And I was getting more books and the cart was running out of room. So I was like, I gotta find another place to put these project bags. So I bought this basket from HomeGoods. 
and I just have all my project bags in here and yeah and this just sits on the floor next to the cart so kind of excited about that um yeah this video is so random <laughs> uh but anyway Oh, now it's like the perfect temperature for drinking. <laughs> okay. Well, I think the last thing that I'm gonna show, which is also not stitchy related, but I kind of am digging it, so I wanna share and be nerd out with it. But this is my bullet journal. It's a Scribbles That Matter notebook. You can order these on Amazon. And um, I, chose a new setup for September and I'm really liking how it's working out for me so I basically drew like the calendar over here and then this is like where I track how much water I drink and then this is just like my um, habits that I check off that I if I do it and then this is where I put my goals so and my habits if you're curious are to take my vitamin and my pill and then floss and scoop Piper's litter box <laughs> And then I have like this section where I will write down, these are like double columns, and then I'll write down like what I read and how many pages and like what percent complete I am. And then this is where I write down all my stitching. And this is where I write down what exercise I did, which so far this month has just been running and walking. And then this is just like weekly stuff I'm supposed to do to keep my life together. <laughs> and then this is my new favorite thing. It's called a running weekly. And I don't really want to show all my tasks, <laughs> but um, basically you just have these columns that are the days of the week. And then over here, you write down all your tasks and then you can assign them to a day. And as a person who like isn't in school anymore and doesn't do like a whole lot of, like I don't have assignments and stuff. Like I find it very hard to have like a daily planner where you write down every day what you're doing. So I really like this running list where you just like can assign it to a day and it's all still in the same column. Anyway, I'll link a video down below to the video I watched that sh where she talked all about what it is, like if you're interested in that. But yeah, <laughs> so uh, this video is kind of all over the place. I guess that's what I get for just having one whip to show you. But yeah, so. I'm not gonna ramble anymore. I'm gonna let you go. Go have go have fun with your life. <laughs> Quit watching me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I also need to think of an outro because I'm always just like, oh yeah, so. But yeah, I'm doing it again. Okay, well, have a great weekend or week whenever you're watching this. Have a great life. <laughs> um, that sounds kind of morbid. Because it's like, I'm not interested in you good. I never see any of you anyway. I'm just talking to myself. You guys are just watching me. So, uh, okay. I am going to stop talking. Have a great day, week, weekend, whatever you're doing. Um, every, my brain is empty. I need to learn how to do this better. <laughs> As my mom would say, have a great day, be sweet, bye, I love you. <laughs> she would always tell me and my sister to be sweet. Um, so that's kind of our signature. Be sweet when you say bye to somebody. So, be sweet, bye. <laughs>